Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Labrik. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa ratified and issued law number no. 2 for the year 2018 regarding the registration and safety rules for small vessels. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, chaired today the weekly cabinet meeting at Ghalibiya Palace. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, hailed the royal directives for compliance between the executive and legislative authorities to be the criterion for redirecting support to beneficiaries. His Royal Highness stressed the government's keenness to reinforce government parliamentary partnership in all aspects and consolidate continuous cooperation between the two authorities. His Royal Highness also stressed the importance of compliance with the legislative authority to create a mechanism for restructuring support to meet the needs of the citizens. The cabinet was briefed on the coordination meeting with the legislative authority on the restructuring of support to beneficiaries by the deputy prime minister and chairman of the ministerial committee for financial affairs and rationalization expenditure. The Prime Minister hailed the successful visit of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia's Interior Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Abdelaziz bin Saud bin Naif bin Abdelaziz Al Saud, and its importance in terms of bilateral security cooperation between the two countries. His Royal Highness also noted the visit of Kuwait's first Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense, Sheikh Nasser bin Sabah Al Ahmed Al Sabah, and affirmed its importance in strengthening bilateral cooperation, especially in military and defense aspects. His Royal Highness directed to pay more attention to central markets and develop them for their importance in providing the citizens' needs. He also followed up on the development and renewal of the central market in Manama. His Royal Highness directed the Minister of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning to quickly complete the development process and take into account the requirements and interests of merchants. The cabinet followed up on the outcomes of education training and efforts exerted to maintain their quality level through applying standards and evaluating the performance of public and private schools, universities and training institutions. It approved the annual report of the Education and Training Quality Authority for the year 2017. The cabinet commended the efforts of the Supreme Council for the Development of Education and Training chaired by Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Mbarak Al Khalifa, the Ministry of Education. Education, Ministry of Labor and Social Development, and the Education and Training Quality Authority. The Cabinet approved that the priority should be given to Bahraini doctors in the employment of workers in private health institutions for doctors, technicians, and nurses with the necessary qualifications and experience. It also approved a draft law regarding private health institutions. The cabinet approved uh, to terminate uh, the development and production sharing for the development of the Bahrain Field Agreement between National Oil and Gas Authority and the National Oil and Gas Holding Company and issued new service uh, contracts between them to regulate the operation of the Bahrain Field, allowing all the oil and gas resources in Bahrain to be owned by the government of Bahrain. The Cabinet approved Bahrain's joining of the Promotion, Protection and Guarantee of Investment Agreement among the Organization of Islamic Cooperation Member States. The Cabinet approved a proposal on the modern regulations of the status of youth centers and organizations under the supervision of the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports. The Cabinet discussed Bahrain's ratification of the two protocols to amend the Universal Postal Agreement signed in 2012 and 2016 and referred to the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs. The Cabinet discussed an agreement between the Government of Bahrain and the Government of Morocco on air services between and beyond its territories and referred to the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs. The Cabinet also discussed strengthening cooperation with the United Nations and endorsing its role by supporting its youth programs. The Cabinet referred to the Council of Representatives two draft laws, one regarding dilapidated funds and the second on the amendments of the municipalities law. The Cabinet approved a proposal regarding the facilitation of charitable associations and institutions services. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa has extended his congratulations to Bahrain Bayan School after it was awarded the Zayed Future Energy Prize, the ZFEP, at a ceremony held in Abu Dhabi. 
The Bahrain Bayan School beat four other finalists to win the prestigious ZFEP Award in the Global High School category. The ZFEP Award was, recognizes advanced initiatives aimed at promoting and encouraging the sustainable use of energy. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, extended his best wishes to Dr. Sheikh Amin bint Suleiman al Atebi, the chairperson of the Bahrain Bayan School Board of Directors, noting that the award represents a significant achievement for the school. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince stressed that the success of the school is a reflection of the Kingdom's commitment under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad to develop and encourage excellence in the education sector. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince commended the school staff, students and parents for developing such a successful initiative, noting that the school's work reflects the principles of sustainability and competitiveness driving the nation's development. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince highlighted the integral role of the United Arab Emirates in supporting and promo promoting sustainable development on the regional and global level. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince emphasized that Bahrain Bayan School's achievement is testament to the Kingdom's commitment to applying international best practices and modern development principles across key sectors. Under the patronage of the Commander-in-Chief of Bahrain Defense Force, the BDF, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, an honoring ceremony was held today morning celebrating the BDF Special Duty Force 15, which participated in Operation Restoring Hope in Yemen, alongside the Arab Coalition Forces led by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Present was BDF Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagr al Naimi, the Commander of the Royal Guard, His Highness Brigadier General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad al Khalifa, the Commander of the Royal Guard Special Force, His Highness Major General Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad al Khalifa, and His Highness Captain Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad al Khalifa. After playing the anthem of the Commander-in-Chief of the BDF, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed then inspected the guards who stood to salute him. After that, His Highness Brigadier General Sheikh Nasser delivered the following speech. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Sahib al-Ma'ali, al-Mushir al-Rukun, Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed al-Khalifa, al-Qaid al-Aam, liquwad dafa' al-Bahrain, Ashab al-Sa'ada, akhwani rijal quwatan al-Musallahat al-Basila. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sayyidi, yutibu lana an nurahib ma'alikum ajmala tarheeb fil haras al-Malaki. كما يسرنا ويسعدنا يا صاحب المعالي تفضلكم في هذا اليوم 
بتكريم هذه النخبة من أبطال قواتنا المسلحة قوة الواجب 15 بعد أن شاركت مع أخوانهم في قوات التحالف العربي بقيادة الشقيقة الكبرى المملكة العربية السعودية دفاعا عن إسلامنا وعن أرضنا العربية وعن عزتنا وكرامتنا ضد أعداء الدين والعروبة صاحب المعالي كان للتوجيهات الحكيمة لسيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك الملك البلاد المفدى حفظه الله ورعاه قائدنا الأعلى وإيمانه المطلق بنصرة الأشقاء وبأن أي تهديد لأخواننا وجيراننا في الخليج العربي هو تهديد لأمننا ومن هذا المبدأ وعلى هذا النهج الذي خطه جلالته بالوقف مع شقائنا حفاظا على كياننا ووحدتنا فإن رجال قوة الدفاع يستقون من هذه القيم الخالدة منهجا لاستشراف المستقبل واتجاهاته الرئيسية ويدركون حجم المخاطر التي تحاك ضد شعوبنا متسلحين بإيمانهم بالله عز وجل وبإرادته القوية وعزيمة صلبة للتعامل مع كافة التحديات التي تواجه منطقتنا صاحب المعالي إن قوة الواجب 16 الموجودة حالياً والمنتشرة ميدانياً على كافة المناطق والجبهات اليمنية مع شقائهم في التحالف العربي تشارك في القتال ضد المتمردين العملاء الذين تكبدوا خسائر فادحة بأفرادهم وعتادهم وأن قواتنا بحمد من الله تتمتع بإرادة ومعنويات عالية لا تنحني إلا لله عز وجل وفي الختام أدعو الله العزيز القدير أن يحفظ قائد مسيرتنا سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة ملك البلاد المفدى قائدنا الأعلى سنداً وذخراً للأمة العربية والإسلامية وأن يحفظ مملكتنا من كل سوء ومكروه كما أتقدم بالشكر إلى سيدي صاحب السمو الملكي ولي العهد نائب القائد الأعلى النائب الأول لرئيس مجلس الوزراء حفظه الله ورعاه على دعمه وتوجيهاته المتواصلة لأبنائه في قوة الدفاع والشكر موصول لكم يا صاحب المعالي على جهودكم الكبيرة والمتميزة في تذليل الصعاب لكافة المهام المسندة لرجالكم في قوة الدفاع والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته The Commander-in-Chief of the BDF then handed medals granted by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to a number of officers, non-commissioned officers of the BDF Special Duty Force 15 in appreciation of their patriotic efforts and their role in defending justice alongside their brothers, as well as their professionalism and discipline. Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed expressed his pride in the BDF Special Duty Force for participating in the Arab Coalition Forces in implementation to the directives of His Majesty the King as part of a joint defense agreement with the GCC and Arab countries. He wished the members of the Special Force success and safety. He also conveyed to the force the greetings and appreciation of His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. A number of senior BDF officers attended the ceremony.
The Joint Committee of Members from the Representatives and Shura Councils, led by the Speaker of the Shura Council, Ali al Saleh, agreed with the government to restructure the support to beneficiaries. Deputy Premier and Chairman of the Ministerial Committee for Financial Affairs and Control of Expenditure, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah al Khalifa, was present. The meeting called for stopping any new measures or decisions relating to the increase of fees or prices on government goods and services until the end of the joint meetings with the government in order to reach a compromise formula that fulfills the national interest in the exceptional circumstances experienced by the region and the kingdom. As Saleh affirmed that the meeting comes under the vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to enhance the cooperation with the executive and legislative authorities in order to benefit the country and its people. Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa praised the cooperation between the two authorities. He praised the directives of His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa regarding restructuring the support to beneficiaries as well as the study of a unified mechanism of the executive and legislative aspects. He pointed out the financial challenges faced by Bahrain and the region and the need to adopt new measures and initiatives to overcome uh, these challenges as soon as possible. Upon the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to redirect support to beneficiaries through joint cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities, the recently formed Joint Legislative Committee met today with Deputy Prime Minister, Chairman of the Ministerial Committee for Financial Affairs and Control of Expenditure. Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa and a number of ministers and government officials to establish a proper mechanism towards achieving that goal. Sheikh Khalid said that the slogan of the current phase should be based on a series of initiatives and measures through which regional challenges can be overcame at the lowest possible cost, taking into account the best interest of Bahraini citizens and families. The government's support file for social programs in 2017, amounting to 382.5 million Bahraini dinars, has been discussed. It was allocated for social security, allowances covering high prices, disability, pension, quality of life improvement, housing and cash compensation for lifting meat subsidies. The Joint Legislative Committee called for the suspension of any measures or decisions relating to the increase of prices of government goods or services until the end of its joint meetings with the government in order to reach a compromise formula that protects national interest. We are going to establish a technical committee. That committee would look into the details of the role that we are going to achieve, the objective of this committee, in line of the direction which came from the Royal Court. So uh, really, we, and we have agreed on the, on the technical committee to be of seven members, chaired by me, and we have six members, three from the Shura Council and three from, from the Nawab. That committee will be really the committee which will meet the, with, the, with the, their counterpart as technical committee from the government, which will discuss in details what are the subsidies, how to, how to redirect the, the subsidies, and what will be the size of the redirections, and to whom it will be going to. The committee pointed out that it reached an initial vision to be discussed and commissioned to examine the government's direction and consensus on the aspects of support, organizational procedures and other mechanisms. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul Ghaffour. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs in the Kingdom of Bahrain strongly condemns the interception by Qatari fighter jets of a civil Emirati aircraft, Emirates Airline Flight 837, heading towards Bahrain during Bahrain's routine flight in the usual air route today morning. Qatar violated the international agreements and laws issued by the International Civil Aviation Organization, the ICAO, as well as the Chicago Convention on International Civil Aviation and its amendments for the year 1944. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs asserts that this unacceptable hostile behavior from Qatar has become recurrent in recent times and it jeopardizes the safety of civil aviation and imposes a threat on the lives of civilians. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs stresses the solidarity of the Kingdom of Bahrain with the United Arab Emirates as well as its support to the measures it takes to maintain its security and stability to stop and repel these violations by the state of Qatar. 
The General Civil Aviation Authority of the United Arab Emirates announced that the Qatari fighter jets intercepted a second civil aircraft during its descent to Bahrain International Airport on Bahrain's regular scheduled flight according to the approvals and permits agreed internationally, which is another threat to civil aviation made by Qatar and another clear violation of international laws and conventions. The authority said in a statement that this incident constitutes a serious and renewed breach of international conventions and the safety of civil aircraft traffic. The authority is now examining the legal options available according to ICAO and other relevant organizations. A very good evening. You're watching the Business News in Bahrain International with me, Heba Abdul Ghaffar. Bahrain All Share Index has closed at 1,324.1 points, marking an increase of 4.7 points above the previous closing. The increase was in the commercial banks and the industrial sectors, and investors mainly traded in the commercial bank sector, representing 79% of the total value of traded shares. 75 equity transactions took place, including 7,334,822 shares, worth 804,324 Rainy Dinars. The Information and E-Government Authority has launched the Government Directory mobile app on the E-Government App Store. It provides a comprehensive set of officials, contact details, along with government entities' locations and social media accounts. The app is part of the direct government communication series with citizens and residents and provides contact details for senior public officials, ministers, deputy ministers, undersecretaries, chief executive officers, advisors, directors, acting directors, and nearly 700 employees in 55 entities. Such initiative is in line with the leadership's open-door policy with the public.